birding is always living in the moment. Birding forces you to just look at the, the world around you and see what's happening, you know, outside of your mind. See what's happening in front of you and around you, really make you realize, you know, here I am just standing watching this go by and I'm just a small part in a, a very big picture. Once you learn about these species, it's only when you do that that you can really connect with them. And a lot of what I've done in my life is try to help create these databases of bird population trends because they're the canaries in the coal mine uh, about what sort of impact we're having on our environments. We can track which bird species are doing well, which are declining. And that's where birders can play a real role in conservation, is providing that underlying data that will help biologists and politicians even understand what's going on and what we have to do. We are at the Iona Island Bird Observatory. Uh, which is a project run by Wild Research where we monitor migratory birds coming through Iona and through the Lower Mainland. We catch birds as they move up and down the Pacific Flyway and we take measurements and we put bands on them so that if we catch them somewhere else we can uh, see where they're going. So we are opening the nets. Um, we do this half an hour before sunrise. Um, and then from there, we'll check them every half hour for six hours. They can't be too tight, otherwise they don't really fall into the pocket. The birds kind of bounce off. Um, but they can't be too loose, otherwise they just get too tangled. Okay. So now we wait for birds to start filling the nets. Okay, hey buddy. So this, this is a golden crown sparrow. This is a very special bird uh, because they are kind of one of our West Coast specials. They're only along the Western coast of North America. Some species are very calm. Oh, some species are a little bit more, uh, I don't know, uh, antsy when you get them in the hand. Sparrows are kind of in the middle, but definitely leaning towards the calm side. Warblers, they just kind of sit there. I don't know why it's like that. Chickadees will fight you. Chickadees are nasty. In a good way. I love them, but pull his wing out. There we go. And then the other wing. Hey, buddy. like that. So we got to keep checking nets, but first we got to put this guy safely in one of our specially designed bird bags. There you go. Nicely done. That's a cute one. Yeah, just a little touch of yellow. Aging them is incredibly difficult. We have to look at really subtle plumage traits, the shape of the feathers, the wear on the feathers, whether or not different feathers contrast because some are older than others. And from the patterns of growth of the feathers, we can determine an age of the bird. Once you start seeing birds, and, and not just sort of seeing birds and saying, that's a bird, but seeing a bird and really trying to figure out what kind of bird that is and realizing just how many species there are around you at all times, I think that really opens up your eyes to the natural world as a whole. There's always so much more to learn about the birds and about, about their lives and about how it all relates with our ecosystem and, and our, our Earth. It's always so much more interesting 
to, especially when you're starting, to go out with people who may know more about birds or this area than, than you and you can learn from them and also learn what kind of contributions you can make. Today we are here at Black East Spit in South Surrey and we will be going on a Filipino birding walk for the Filipino community. Traditionally, birding is not a, a popular Filipino activity and so having an event like this really is good to welcome people who want to learn more about birds and just spend time in nature in general. I thought I was odd for being like a Filipino birder, but it turns out there's a lot of uh, bird curious Filipinos and they just needed an opportunity to go and uh, go for a birding walk and see what's out there. I was always one of those kids who was in, kind of obsessed with bugs and reptiles and dinosaurs and um, all the fun animals. <laughs> and so, yeah, when our family moved here from the Philippines, it was something I could, I could pursue, and so I did. There's just so much so much to see out there and there's so many amazing stories and adaptations and diversity so it's to me that's always been the most interesting thing ever <laughs> it's, it's such a special spot that ooh, nature like this is so accessible there's so much birds around us and it's so diverse and it's you know, a 10 minute drive from the city. And it really is a privilege just to be out here and be able to experience birds this close. When you go to your local park, you might always see something uh, different. And so there's always that little bit of mystery to it. Like, oh, should I go out today? I'm feeling lazy. But if you do, you might see something special, like a Western grebe. <laughs> Birding is for everybody, and it's important that we not only say that we welcome people of color into the birding community, I think it's important that we do that as well by having walks like this. Also meeting people from the BIPOC community who are also uh, birders, it's, it's great. You know, it's not just, before it was just, oh, I'm kind of that odd one, but you realize there's so many more people like you and you can just connect with them. It really is a, a huge privilege to be able to share what you love. There is no place more beautiful than Vancouver Island and it's a birder's paradise from songbirds all the way up to raptors. We're so blessed to have an abundance of, of raptors that call Vancouver Island home. We're in Arrington, which is the home of the North Island Wildlife Recovery Center. Our mission is to partner with the public and the community on Vancouver Island to help wildlife. At the center, we rehabilitate almost all native animals. We also work uh, extensively with raptors. On Vancouver Island this summer, we had an exceptional heat wave, and that heat wave was very dramatic for our eagles, both young and old. The young eagles were leaving the nest early because it was just exceptionally hot. They were hitting the ground, and the parents were Unfortunately, in a position where they were struggling themselves and the young um, basically got abandoned. And so that is the particular case with this eagle. So we got her back to the center. 
we were able to build her back up and build her back up and she was a really great patient. She was uh, very feisty, which is a good thing to see from eagles and she progressed beautifully. Okay, you've got a good grip. Awesome. So what we're gonna do first and foremost is we're gonna check her body condition, uh, her overall body condition. And there's an eagle down here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And there it is. So she's, yeah, she's in, in very, very good condition. Well-defined pectoral muscles and a, a nice, nice layer of, of subcutaneous fat there. Nice muscle definition in the legs, good mobility. This eagle is in great shape and uh, ready for her final stage of rehabilitation and that's into the, the flight enclosure with the others. We were so blessed on Vancouver Island to have so much amazing wildlife. For us at North Island Wildlife Recovery Centre and, and me on a personal level, to be able to give back anything that I can is amazing because the, the nature and the natural beauty that Vancouver Island has given me is immense. There, there's, no, there's no way to quantify it. So as, as much help that I can give to wildlife, big or small, it, it's all a really magical, a magical thing that I don't take lightly and I am very cognizant of how lucky I am and how thankful I am to be able to do what I am doing. When you walk through a ponderosa pine forest and you see a flock of pygmy nuthatches and white-breasted nuthatches and mountain chickadees and golden crowned kinglets all foraging together through the trees, this is their life. This is, it's important for them and us to have these ecosystems that are functioning, ecosystems that you know, are getting the water and clean air that they need is, and providing it to us. It really takes you out of your own special little place in the universe and puts you in a bigger space and birding connects you with that. <laughs>